Hello and good morning or evening or night whenever you watch this. I hope it's a good one and that you're doing well. All right. On Monday, we learned about cameras and what the distinguishing things that uh, make a good camera a good camera or an expensive camera an expensive camera. Okay. Uh, today we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do that with lenses. Um, now, photographers, obviously you need a camera and a camera doesn't do a dang thing without a lens attached to it. So as a photographer, you should have a few good lenses. Um, so what makes a good lens? Um, I want to start off by just saying a little anecdote. When I was in high school, my photography teacher, and mind you, this was in the film days, said that a good lens can make up for a bad camera. And I still think that's true. Even today in digital, you can have all the megapixels in the world or you can have a few megapixels on your camera or however it records. And if you have really bad glass, a really crappy lens on the front of a very nice camera, it's not gonna do anything. And if we flip that, if you have a very nice piece of glass or a very nice lens on a decent or okay camera, it's gonna be just as good, if not better, than that nice camera with the crappy lens, okay? So uh, a few things that we're gonna talk about today. Number one is focal length. The other is what is called a prime or a zoom lens. Now to understand the basic lens definitions, the first thing we really need to talk about is focal length. Now focal length is represented or measured in millimeters and it is the basic description of a lens. It is a measurement of the length, not, excuse me, it's not a measurement of the length of the lens, right? It doesn't matter physically how big it is. Uh, it is a measure of the uh, point inside the lens where sharp focus is achieved and from that point to the sensor in the camera. Um, the focal length is determined when a fo lens is set to infinite focus, right? So when the lens array like this, see how that extends? When that's all the way down, that will focus to infinity. So if I point this at the horizon, the horizon will be in focus right in front of me won't be in focus. So that determination, let's say the, ki the film is back here, the sensor is back here, the focal length is the distance from where the point of focus is inside the lens and from that point to the sensor, okay? So this we'll say is 50 millimeters, okay? This, you know, the focal point could be here. And so it's measured from here to here, which you know, is, is 70 millimeters or whatever, okay? So focal length is the point of focus inside the lens and then the distance from that point to the sensor in your camera. Now, focal length will tell us what our field of view is. Now, field of view is how much of the scene in front of you you're going to capture, okay? Are you gonna capture a lot? Are you gonna capture a little? Are you gonna get, you know, Bethlehem steel to Juice World, Or are you just gonna get my head? My, my head's rather large, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> the longer the focal length is, when I say longer, I mean numerically larger. So the longer a focal length is, so for example, uh, a 200, right? 200 millimeters, the longer it is, the narrower, your field of view will be, okay? And the wider it is, the, excuse me, the, the smaller that, that measurement of millimeters is, the wider your field of view will be. So for example, if I was shooting with a 20 millimeter lens, I would get everything from Bethlehem Steel over here to Juice World over here. If I was shooting on a 200 millimeter lens, all you would see is just my face, right? Okay, now there are trade-offs to shooting with a short or a long lens and a reason to use them. Um, de just depends on what your needs are for the shoot, right? Is 100% is contingent on that. 
The big distinguishing, uh, excuse me, the, the excuse me, the trade-offs for these. Sorry. Um, no. Prime versus zoom. Excuse me. Now, um, focal length, field of view aside, we have the difference between a prime lens and a zoom lens. Okay. A prime lens only has one focal length, right? And this lens right here in my hand is a 50 millimeter lens. It only has one focal length. Now, if I were to take this lens, it is a 17 to 40 millimeter lens, meaning that as I twist this ring, that focal length changes, okay? So prime lenses, one focal length. Zoom lenses, variable focal length, okay? Trade-offs to each of these. Zoom lenses, great because you can take one lens and get a versatile and a wide arrangement of um, uh, focal lengths, okay? So this lens, 17 to 40. This lens, 70 to 200, okay? Um, the, the, the downside to using a zoom lens is that typically a zoom lens is physically larger, right? Physically longer. This is a 50 mil, 17 to 40, prime zoom. It's almost, actually I would say it's actually almost, eh, not quite double, but double the focal length, or excuse me, double the physical size. Um, longer zoom lenses can be very heavy. You know, this thing's probably three pounds. Um, so your, your trade-offs there are that um, your zoom lens, though it allows you to capture a wider range wide range of focal lengths. It can be heavy, long, and cumbersome. So if you're a street photographer, you don't exactly want to, you know, be walking around and just like quickly pulling up this lens to take a picture of somebody because they're going to see it right away, right? If you have a small little 50 mil lens like this bad boy, right? It's, it's a little more surreptitious. It's a little more, a little more uh, concealed, smaller. Um, Generally, a zoom lens will have a higher, um, or excuse me, a, 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 a higher aperture number associated to it. So for example, this lens here is a 1.4, so it's an f4 at its maximum aperture. This lens is a 1.4, so it has three and a half stops more light being let in on this than does this. Um, Prime lenses, again, they are much more compact and they will have a better maximum aperture value, meaning that you have more creative control for things like uh, shallow depth of field. And obviously more light equals less time. And so you can have shorter exposure times, which is usually a good thing. Okay, so focal lengths themselves. We have what are called your um, wide angle lens, which in my opinion runs to 17 to about 30, 35. This is a 17 to 40. So this is a very wide lens. Sometimes wide lenses will have distortion, especially on the corners. Like for example, if my hands, if, if I out here on the, on the sides of the frame here, right? If those, if I had like straight pillars, they would start to appear curved a little bit, not quite to a super wide like a fisheye lens where they're definitely curved in, um, but a little bit of curving at the edges. Um, and you'll also maybe see a little distortion with vignetting, which is those darker corners a little bit sometimes. Um, so a zoom, a, a wide angle lens generally runs from about 17 to about 35-ish in, in that range, okay? Um, a standard lens, and they call it a standard lens because uh, it, uh, it is very close to what the human eye sees, uh, is anything from, uh, I consider a 35 a standard lens, most people don't, but a standard lens is anything from about a 50 to a 70. So these 50 millimeter lenses are a standard lens. And that will allow you to essentially see what uh, your eyes see, 
okay? So putting those into field of view terms, a 17 millimeter lens will capture a wide range, right? So you'll have interiors if you're a, 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 a real estate photographer. Uh, interiors are a great way uh, to use those lenses to, to great efficiency. Landscape photographers, right? You can stand fairly close to a, a, a mountain and capture the whole thing with a wide lens. Large groups, um, like uh, you know the whole bridal party, you'll want to use a wider lens there. Um, and then some creative things as well. They say one of the first rules in photography is to not use a wide lens for portraiture, but just, you do you, man. I think it's fine. Back to standard lenses. Um, these are versatile. I love the 50 millimeter lens. It's one of my favorites. It's very good for anything from portraiture to um, capturing details of products. Then we have kind of the, the, the mid-range or what I've dubbed the, uh, the, uh, the standard telephoto lens, okay? Now these are very good for portraits and some sporting events, not a lot. Maybe not any actually. Uh, but these are the range from about 70 to 100-ish um, and uh, uh, these are great for portraiture. My favorite lens is the, my favorite focal length, excuse me, is the 85 millimeter. I love, love, love that length. Great for portraits. Um, if you stand back, you can still capture your subject in the scene. Um, they're, they're just fantastic. 85 is, is it for me. Love, love, love that lens. Then we have what are called the telephoto lenses. Uh, which are uh, anywhere from, I would say, technically 70 to like 200, but I would say like 135 to 200, okay? Now, uh, a telephoto lens is awesome for sporting events. Anytime you're trying to compress your subject a lot, um, you can use those lenses there. Um, anything above a 200 is what we're gonna call a super telephoto lens, and those are really reserved for sports and uh, what we call birding lenses, people who just take pictures of wildlife and birds. Um, so yeah, wildlife and, and birding lenses, anything I would say 200 or above. Um, you get into weird stuff after that. So um, just like cameras, kind of onto the assignment part of this, just like cameras, there's a lot more uh, than just the superficial numbers that uh, will determine um, what, cost a lens is. For example, these two lenses are both 50 millimeter lenses. Try it. I can't really exemplify that. Sorry. Um, these two lenses are both 50 millimeter lenses. They have the same focal length. Okay. But when we look at these, this lens is $125. This lens, I think is about 350. Um, I don't know. I think we'll say 350, right? So what makes this lens, what makes this lens two and a half times the cost? Okay. Well, if we look closely, we will see that there's a lot of numbers on here that we are looking at. Okay. So for this lens, we can, if you can read that, it says uh, 50 millimeter 1.8 STM. Okay. Now this one says, Turn that upside down, 1.4. And it does not say STM, which actually matters, okay? STM is what is called a stepping motor. It's the cheapest motor we can get, but it, uh, it's, it's fine, okay? And if we look physically on these two, uh, sorry, this is what's called an ultrasonic motor. So it's much more responsive. It's a little more accurate for focusing, and it's a little bit quieter, which matters. Okay, if we're looking at the front elements here, the, the pieces of glass there, okay? Ooh, can make them my glasses. Um, this front element is a little bit larger than this one. The reason being, we go back to that number, the 1.4 versus 1.8, okay? This is letting in one stop more light than this. So it's more expensive, right? It's a little bit heavier, it's... Uh, Excuse me, a little bit heavier, does a little bit 
uh, excuse me, a much better job of letting in maximum aperture volume of light, okay? Which gives you more creative control, again, for things like aperture value, right? You can have a much shallower depth of field on a 1.4 than you can a 1.8, and on down to a 1.2 even, okay? So uh, then we split that hair even further. There is a 50 millimeter 1.2 that Canon makes, and it's like $2,000, casually, right? They even make, actually they make another one that's like 3,000 bucks, but we won't really get into that, okay? Um, so the big distinguishing cost thing there is, uh, on those two lenses, for example, there, was just a maximum aperture of light. Okay, on to a different lens series, okay? This is a 70 to 200. This is a 70 to 200. Oops, sorry. Cool. This is also a 70 to 200, okay? This lens you could pick up on KSL for about 60 bucks. This lens to buy new, it's about $600. This lens to buy new is about $2,000, okay? Now, why, right? They're all the same focal length, so they should be the same cost. Well, wrong, obviously. Um, this lens does, it, it, it zooms. Yes, it is a 70 to 200. When you zoom this lens, it physically telescopes out, okay? And uh, when we look at the aperture values here, we have 1.4 to 5.6. What that indicates is that if I'm shooting here at 70, excuse me, it's a 75 to 300, so when I'm shooting here at 75, that'll be an f4. When I go out here, that will be a 5.6. So it has a variable aperture value. Now this has a fixed aperture value, but it is at f4. So it's not very bright, okay? So, uh, and it's fixed, right? When I telescope out from 70 to 200, it doesn't change the le length of the lens physically at all, okay? Um, right, sorry, lost my brain there for a second, okay? This lens <clears throat> is a 70 to 200, but it's, it is a fixed aperture value at 2.8. So it's letting in two stops more light than this one, and there's your big cost. This also has what is called image stabilization built into the lens. It has a gyroscope system built in here, which helps account for a photographer's shaky hand, okay? So there's your, your big cost, right? Um, the, the other big distinguishing factor for uh, these two lenses in why they cost more is to let in two stops more light, we need to have bigger pieces of glass. Glass refining is just inherently expensive. So to refine that glass and make it super shiny and uh, totally clear is very expensive, okay? All right, if you're still with me, I am going to give you an Easter egg here and say, um, I'm gonna say, what's my favorite color? And the answer is red. Okay, I'll give you an extra credit point if you put that in your subject of your assignment, okay? Favorite color is red. Put that in your assignment, extra credit points. Okay, um, so your assignment, I'm giving you 500 bucks to shop for a lens and you need to def defend your decision why you're using it, uh, why you're uh, spending that money on whatever lens. Tell me everything you know about the lens, okay? Um, everything you know, so give me your aperture value, give me your um, max aperture value, is it fixed aperture? Is it, is it uh, variable? Um, uh, tell me what you pick and why. Tell me everything you can about the lens. That will be your assignment. Hope you're all doing well. Have a good day.